Hey, 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 welcome, welcome to this Wicked Woman Wednesday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. We're coming today live as we do every single day, Monday to Friday, noon to 2 Eastern, from the Question Tequila Studios. We're also uh, joined today by the full line of Hooters Spirits. Plenty for all the women on Women Wednesday to have a nice cocktail today. And uh, right down the street at the New York Stock Exchange to kick off this Wicked Woman Wednesday show, uh, we take a look in on a Dow that is raging. Uh, the Dow is up 400 as we speak. As you know, uh, last week we had that big dip, 600 on the coronavirus fears. Uh, got back 150 on Monday, got back 400 yesterday, another 400 today. So we're just about at 29,000. The markets are feeling fine. That whole corona business is going to go by the wayside any minute now. Uh, the big uh, State of the Union last night, where Trump repeatedly referred to the greatness of America, reached out and said that he wants to work on new things with the Democrats in the new year. Um, no can do. Nancy Pelosi just rips the whole thing up. Um, Bitcoin is at 9,500, up about 400 today, which is big. A bus through 10,000 could put it on a rocket shop. Uh, all that and more coming up a little later on. Zen Sams is going to be here as usual. Fog City Midge joins us giving her insights from San Francisco on the left coast where she's waving the uh, Republican and conservative MAGA banner. And uh, right here in our studios, I'm joined again as usual by Frank Morano, my managing editor, co-host in the Frank Zone. Hey, Hello Frankie. there, John. Great to be here in the Frank Zone. Happy Women's Wednesday to you. It is great to be with you too, my friend. Thank you. What's happening? Well, uh, a lot of very interesting things happening. A lot of people still trying to make sense of what happened in Iowa. Uh, on uh, <laughs> on Monday and over the weekend, uh, and that's something that uh, doesn't seem to be getting clear anytime soon. So far as it stands now, as you know, John, there's 62 percent of the vote in, or 62 percent of precincts reporting in, and even though Bernie Sanders got the most votes, Pete Buttigieg is leading oh, in terms of well, uh, well, I, well, so. looky, looky here. <laughs> Do we have do we have any tallies yet on the on the turnout? How many people voted? Anything on that yet? I don't board? have that information, but I will be happy. We're going to get into that, but you know, swept under the rug this week uh, is, if you ask me, a really serious uh, scheme for election interference, which was the big thing that Donald Trump was so guilty of. I want you to take a look at some of this stuff. Now, you guys at home, and Frankie, you too, you know that I make conspiracy theories sometimes for entertainment. This is from Associated Press, okay? The maker of the glitchy Iowa caucus app has Democratic Party ties. Would you believe that? I do believe that. You do believe that. So I did some investigative reporting over the last couple of days because this keeps getting swept under the rug. There is a scheme afoot here by Hillary Clinton and the establishment to bump out Bernie. And as the evidence will show, they are right now teaming up with former Mayor Pete. So let's take a look at some of the facts here, okay? Do we have the, uh, I did some whiteboards this morning. The Iowa app Shadow, okay? That company was founded by a woman named Tara McGowan. Now remember that name, Tara McGowan, founded the company that made this app. Her husband, Michael Hale, just happens to be a senior strategist for Mayor Pete. You got that? Okay, so, that does sound Tara a Tara McGowan All right. owns Shadow, okay? They made a deal with her husband, Michael Hale, where Mayor Pete paid them $42,000. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. We got that so got far? It. Okay, let me continue. And I put this on the whiteboard so it's like really clear. You can put together the pieces for yourself. Now, there's another company, a nonprofit called Acronym, which was founded by Gerard Namira, who is a former Hillary chief of field operations in tech. Okay, lo and behold, Acronym and Shadow share an office in DC. They have the same exact address, according to tax records. In D.C., in a WeWorks, acronym and Gerard Namira from the Hillary campaign, Tara McGowan, the wife of Michael Hale from the Buttigieg campaign. So there's a connection there, okay? Now, 
let's take a look. Who else is part of Shadow? This company, Shadow. This shadowy little company. Um, Namira, as I mentioned, was the CEO. Was Clinton's director of product responsible for creating digital platform for field organizers. James Hickey, Shadow's chief operating officer, was an engineering manager at Hillary for America. And Krista Davis, the chief technical officer of Shadow, chief software architect at Shadow, was a back-end engineer for the Clinton campaign. So you got Hillary's former top guy. You got all her former people in these two companies sharing an office. They gave $42,000 from Mayor Pete's campaign to Shadow, okay? And now, all of a sudden, Shadow is having all these problems. They can't calculate properly. Lo and behold, Sunday night, you got all these Hillaryites teaming up with Pete Buttigieg and uh, Tara McGowan's husband, okay? And where's Tara McGowan and Michael Hale on Sunday evening celebrating over drinks Ms. McGowan's birthday? She tweeted this out. Oh, I'm just with the Iowa Democratic Party chair making an appearance, Troy M. Price. Uh, there it is, a tweet uh... from her. So you got Hillary folks, with Buttigieg folks, they pay Shadow 40 grand. Shadow is teaming up and having drinks with Troy Price, the chairman of the Iowa State Democratic Party. And then when the numbers start rolling in, that Bernie's in the lead, all of a sudden the app doesn't work, mm. Frankie. So, I, you know, you usually keep me honest on this stuff. Um, what That's do you think? Suspicious. You know what I also find somewhat suspicious in line with those sort of connections? Uh, the fact that P Pete Buttigieg seemed to know the night of the Iowa caucuses <laughs> that he won, even though he didn't get the most votes, when no one else knew. So at the very least, I'm not saying there were shenanigans on the vote counting front, but in the leaking of information from this, this shadow app to the Buttigieg campaign, it strikes me as uh, a little odd. So now, uh, hold on. Don't go yet. There's more. Okay. Don't just think I read one article. I double and triple sourced this. So here is some reporting from our very own New York Post right here in New York, okay? Now, this company was founded in 2017, okay? In 2018, they started getting all these deals with these Democratic parties to use the app. Brand new startup gets a state government contract. Weird to begin with, okay? You would think before you put the first primary ever in the hands of a new technology, it would be tested. This from the New York Post. Iowa Democrat Jonathan Green, who works on IT, told Vice.com he did not get an email with instructions for precinct leaders until Super Bowl Sunday and then got another email at 1 p.m. Monday with the subject line, important final app instructions. So somehow this company sent out their final instructions to all the 1,700 precinct leaders on Monday. Never tested, never tried, never downloaded. Um, and by the way, Acronym is a nonprofit, as I mentioned. Their 2,000 tax-exempt return for fiscal 2017 shows that they had 1.3 million in contributions and grants, because they got to spend all the money, right? In September of 2018, Tara McGowan on uh, Ozzy.com, on her profile, said that they had $18 million on hand, and they had bumped up the staff to 38 people. So how does a startup go from $1 million to $18 million in one year, miraculously brand new company, get this deal with the Iowa State chairman to run the caucus app, um, and then two nights before the caucus, the fix is in for Buttigieg and uh, the owner of the app and her husband, who's Buttigieg's campaign guy, uh, are having drinks with Troy Price from Iowa. Why is no one looking at this as election interference? And Bernie folks should be going wild, as far as I'm concerned, Frank. I don't well, know. keep look, me honest. I think uh, the person that seems to, I mean, there seems to be three people 
that were helped by the delay in the reporting of the results. One is Donald Trump, because it, it makes the other side look like a bunch of clowns. That's right. Uh, two is Mike Bloomberg, who has been the, uh, the guy that has been saying Iowa and New Hampshire should not be able to vote first and have an outsized impact on our elections, and you don't see anybody else really getting any momentum. And then the third is Biden, because if we had known for sure that Biden had finished fourth or fifth, maybe even, on, on caucus night, um, that would have been the narrative the whole next day. But he gets to quietly leave Iowa uh, without really being defeated, because it was unknown if it was, uh, if it was the fact that he lost the race and go over to New Hampshire and kind of start campaigning anew. So uh, I think uh, it's very interesting how this whole thing is going Well, out. look, you go back to... You go back to 2016, Frankie, right? And we know without a doubt that the fix was in from the DNC to knock Bernie out of the race, okay? We know that, right? That, that's, that's pretty much Bernie people have said it. We know it, okay? Now suddenly you said it perfectly. Here are the beneficiaries. Mayor Pete, Mike Bloomberg, Joe Biden. Mayor and Pete Trump. and Donald Trump, of course. He's the big winner because... These are the folks that are telling you they're going to institute Medicare for all and they're going to put everybody on a little app and everything else. They can't even count 170,000 votes on their little appster thing. They're going to handle somehow the whole Medicare for all thing. But all of it comes down in a big funnel to where when you squeeze it out the bottom, all the people that benefit from this are on the establishment side with Hillary Clinton, and this is just a repeat of 2016 when the Clinton cartel wants to knock Bernie Sanders and his socialist squad out of the picture. And for them, it's anyone but Bernie. And, uh, you know, I'm not for Bernie, but the Bernie folks should be screaming like mad right now, and I don't hear much. Uh, and I'll just add this uh, on a somewhat unrelated note. I do have to give the Democratic Party credit in this respect that they're allowing Bernie Sanders, who's not a registered Democrat, to actually run in and compete in the Democratic primaries. Now, Bernie's not a registered Democrat, and yet he's on the ballot in New Hampshire. He's going to be on the ballot, as I understand it, in uh, New York. Now, if the Republican Party has not shown that same degree of openness to independent candidates. I mean, they made Donald Trump go through this purity test, not only switch parties to the Republican Party, but uh, sign a pledge uh, but Frank, that he was going to not run as a third party candidate. Yeah, but Frankie, are they really letting him run in the race? Well, they're letting or him run are the they ballot. Just doing, right, they're letting him to make it look good. Oh, we'll let an independent in. But this is the second political presidential cycle where the establishment is clearly trying to nudge Bernie yeah, out of the I don't picture. Think the so they let him in I don't think, just to abuse him. I don't think the establishment's making any bones about the fact that they prefer a candidate other than Bernie Sanders. But in some respects, and I saw your friend Donald Trump Jr. making a similar point the other day, in some respects, it's a lot like what happened with Trump in 2016. When Trump ran in 2016 in the primaries, you had every living Republican president or presidential nominee opposing him. You, it, he didn't have the endorsement of a single living Republican chairman, national committee chairman. They were all against him, and yet he still managed to win it, not because of the establishment or insiders, but because of the voters. And I think Bernie might be well positioned to win the nomination under the same circumstances. No doubt, but um, I didn't hear about anything in that race where they were talking about actual going in and, and creating, you know, what I would say election interference against Trump. You know, none of the establishment that I know of went in and held back lists or bumped them out or tried to change the results of a primary. It's a, a lot hairier than it may look, but uh, we'll keep you posted on all that. I certainly will. Um, many of my conspiracy theories are deep outside the lines, but uh, this one isn't a theory. These are the facts, folk, and most of the stuff is reported by the Associated Press. They usually call it like they see it. Uh, we're going to mix it up right after this. David Eisenbach and Johnny Burnett are here like they're here every single Wednesday. And uh, me and Frank are going to talk to the owner of the Mold Authority, give you some tips on how to keep your house and your kids safe from the supposed coronavirus. My brother Derek's out on the street. He's going to come in with his man on the street stuff. Zen Sam's is here. Fog City Mitch. Wicked, wicked woman Wednesday. Coming back at you right after this.